Hi guys, how are you? Mind this one, Titanium. Welcome back to Real Macroeconomics and Investing. Let's do another video of debunking MMT. Word fuckery, putting the cart ahead of the horse. Um, the whole entire argument of prescription MMT is just basically garbage. Okay, and I'm going to. Uh, continue to expose why that is okay it has nothing to do with me <laughs> my vague hunches and feelings have nothing to do with math facts and data now in this video uh, we're going to cover uh, a nice discussion that I had with uh, Warren and uh, Stephanie Kelton is also on the thread and the thread basically said that um, the natural rate of interest is zero and this is going to be a topic that we're going to talk about later uh, about bonds and uh, negative rates and what's going on and how does that affect everything and why why it even exists today. OK, so before we get there, um, uh, I'm, the first response is basically that, uh, yes, you know, zero interest rates is the natural rate, because if you put two dollars together in the corner and you come back a year later, they're not going to have sex and have little babies. Right. So. You must artificially uh, stimulate that. And the way we do that is by setting interest rates higher and then paying uh, an interest rate on that debt. Now, you're saying, well, you know, MMT says there's no such thing as debt. No, that's not correct because debt, uh, we are in debt to productivity. Okay. Uh, if the amount of dollars uh, that are in the system that are created out of thin air, uh, exceed the amount of productivity, you're going to start to get inflation at some point. The, the faith of that currency will be lost because it's just an abundance of it and it starts to get out of control. Now, this is more of a libertarian, uh, Austrian, uh, you know, supply side economic nonsense. To a point, it is. Okay to a point and we'll explain that a little bit later the the argument between demand side and supply side uh, has been going on academically forever and a day okay I, I don't care about either of those things I'm not an academic I don't care about you know oh my idea is better than your idea nor do I care about politics okay I, I am apolitical <laughs> uh, Socialism is bad. Capitalism is bad. No, you need both. OK, uh, you, you need a certain amount of socialism, a certain amount of capitalism. And it depends on where, what kind of economy you have, what state that economy is in. There's so many variables that, uh, you know, to say that I'm one side or the other is just plain stupid. I am a contrarian in the sense that uh, I don't accept uh, the A or B option. OK. I like the C option. I like to think differently. I like to look at everything from both sides, uh, uh, viewpoints, and then come up with what reality is. So uh, if you're telling me, you know, well, socialism is the best or capitalism is the best, uh, no, those two options to me, they're not good enough. Okay? It's somewhere in between. So in that sense, I'm a contrarian, not a contrarian that thinks opposite of what one ideology versus the other. Okay, that's not a contrarian. That's <laughs> most people think it is, but it's not. Uh, a real, true contrarian is an independent thinker that is not usually not very popular. So now that we got that out of the way, um, so when they say that you know rates being this, first of all, the, right now we have 15 trillion dollars in negative rates. We have 30 trillion dollars of uh, rates that cannot even meet. Uh, that nation's uh, inflation okay so they're underperforming inflation and there's total I think 52 58 trillion dollars of bonds in the world okay so what's going on now if you look at the yield curve across the planet was starting to, to to do that flattening out and what happens is that affects banks they borrow at the short end they lend out at the long end and if it, the short end is 1% and the long end is 4%, they're making 3% and that's a lot of money and they're happy. And they're more willing to lend 
um, to the private sector. Now, MMT is against this uh, 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 banking, independent banking, even though they acknowledge that banks are agents of the government, right? They create their own money. Loans create deposits, okay? But MMT doesn't want it that way. What MMT would prefer is zero interest rate policy, ZERP. And ZERP does a couple of things for them. First, it, um, it, it puts the banks in a position where they cannot make money, so therefore they have to be controlled by the government. And what is consistent with throughout MMT, and you're going to see that in, the, in, in my post here, is that they want the government to control everything. Basically the Soviet Union, okay, USSR days. Um, another such example, uh, MMT, right, wants to set the price of wages, right? So they say, well, we'll give you a job guarantee, okay? It's not really jobs. It's not, that's, a job guarantee does not require any skills, okay? And no training. You just go into this program, you punch in, you punch out, you, I don't know, plant flowers, peel gum off the street, do something that is really not productive and does not increase the productivity of the economy. Uh, and the government just gives you $36,000, they give you full benefits, and, you know, along with that, obviously, you go out and get a credit card, put yourself in debt, and uh, a, a, a state of third world uh, untouchable uh, class, uh, as we've seen in the past in India, right, the untouchables. So now we have these big silos with humans in it, uh, waiting for the private sector to come and snatch them um, up and uh, give them a job that hopefully is going to pay them more. The problem is that, you know, when you put a job guarantee, which is not a job, it's a welfare uh, system. When you, when you do that, what happens is everybody that's, you know, right above that pay wage, uh, those wages are suppressed. And that's what they say, we anchor inflation. Yeah, you anchor inflation by suppressing wages outside of the job guarantee. So now we have that the government is going to set zero interest rates. It's going to control the banks. It's going to control labor. It's going to control wages, um, which brings us to health care. Then the government is going to control health care as well. And, of course, the Green New Deal, right? The government will control energy as well. So the government is controlling everything. This is, this is uh, you know, uh, again, Soviet Union, USSR, hello, com comrade, welcome to America. So now let's go back and let's talk about where they start, right? Because they'll, they'll, they'll feed you in small little pieces, and you agree to the small little pieces, and in, in the whole you end up as Soviet Union. So here's the zero interest rate policy where uh, Warren Mosler is uh, debunking the Fed, okay, that they are uh, useless, basically. So let, let's hear him. And here we go. Let me move this over. Let's go. The Federal Reserve has never gotten us into a recession, and they've never gotten us out. It's just what they do has, like, no, no effect in the economy, at least not what they're trying to do. So when they're supposedly tightening, that never slows the economy down. When they're supposedly stimulating, it never picks up. And, you know, we've been saying this for a long time, that, that monetary policy just plain doesn't work. It's a tool that's not connected to anything. It's a little kid with the car seat with a steering wheel who thinks he's driving. Why and does it have so much credibility then, Warren? Like, you know, people it, often point back to the Volcker days and yeah, Alan Greenspan, yeah. and they say, well, no, the Fed's very powerful. And my gosh, I mean, the Fed is in our headlines yeah. virtually every day, Warren. Yeah, well, you know, I've been saying for a long time, it's just a mistake you know they've mistaken yep. correlation and causation they're not controlling anything and if you look back at uh Volcker's times it was what brought the inflation down well oil before his yes he raised rates but the price of oil dropped from like 40 to 10 now today if that ever happened we got that big of a drop of oil let's say it dropped from um, you know, where it is now 60 to 15 we'd yeah. have a massive deflationary event right. okay cpi would be negative for months year over year okay so you heard him from the horse's mouth that uh, the Fed is just a, a child driving uh, with a steering wheel, make it pretend it's driving. Well, if you believe that, then, you know, I got a bridge to sell you. Now, what's funny about the way MMT does things, they say, well, the Fed is ineffective. They're no good. They're, they're, not, they're crap. Okay. 
the next thing they would tell you is that the Fed controls interest rates. Okay, the Fed sets interest rates wherever it wants. So again, we go back to my previous videos, word fuckery, double talk, this fits here whenever I want it to, depending on the argument. This fits over there whenever I want to, depending on the argument. And it's just a word salad of bullshit. So let me debunk something so for you MMTers. Let me debunk something. The Fed set interest rates at 2.5%. Okay. The 10 year went as high as 3.25. And today it is at 1.73 and it went as low as uh, 1.60 who controlled this interest rate and certainly not the fed it is the free market okay that controls interest rates and that's why we have bonds uh, the way we do okay now you can argue that we don't have to have bonds you, we don't have to have a lot of things but that's, that's not the point right the point is that interest rates are set by the market and typically in a strong economy where the Fed sets interest rates is where rates go right so uh, that has that does not mean that the Fed is ineffective they they're just a little child they're uh, you know they're crap they're this they're that okay so now that we got that out of the way let me explain how the Fed used to work Okay, and I'll explain why it doesn't work that way today. All right. So here's the uh, yield curve. This is the short end. This is the long end, 30 years. Some countries have 100 years. So what the Fed used to do was say, you know what? Uh, the yield, and let's say this is 1% and this is 3%, the long end. The yield on the short end um, uh, is, is producing too much profit and banks are lending too much. What I want to do is I want to suppress the amount of money creation by raising the short end. I want to raise this. Okay, I'm going to make this 2%. So then the yield curve would look a little bit more flattish versus what it used to be. So it will be 2% and 3%. So now the margin is instead of being 2%, it is now uh, 1% of profit. So then the banks look at uh, the loans and they say, well, you know, this would have, this loan would have been fine if we had a 2% profit margin, but now we have a 1% profit margin. The, the amount of risk is not worth it. I'm not lending. So you see, by raising interest rates, the Fed, who is just a child with a steering wheel, completely ineffective and an idiot, most certainly does affect how the economy uh, creates money, which is private banking. The vast majority of money is private banking. Now, let me show you something to prove that point. The total government debt, okay, is $66 trillion worldwide, all of it. The total debt worldwide is $244 trillion. Okay, so where did that other 186 trillion come from, right? You see what I'm saying? That is private money creation. Loans create deposits. That means that when interest rates are manipulated up or they're manipulated down, the 180 trillion is affected, okay? All of it is affected, whether it, it be because of the, the bond, the interest that is earned in that bond. The, the opposite of, of debt is savings, right? Our savings, and we'll get to that in a minute, right? So, so from the saver standpoint, it, it, it affects the savers. From the bank standpoint, it affects their profit margins, okay? And the amount of dollars that are lent uh, into the economy. From the borrower's uh, perspective, it is also... Uh, affected as well. The higher the interest rate, the higher that the uh, debt servicing cost uh, becomes for the borrower, and of course uh, they're not going to borrow as much uh, as if they, the, the rates were lower. So clearly, no doubt about it, the Fed 
interest rates are affected okay the Fed is not just some child some idiot uh, or entity whatever once again let's let's hear it from the man himself when they're supposedly tightening that never slows the economy down when they're supposedly stimulating it never picks up and you know we've been saying this for a long time that, that monetary policy just plain doesn't work it's a tool that's not connected to anything it's a little kid with the car seat with a steering wheel who thinks he's driving why does it have so much credibility then, Warren? Like you know, people often point back to the Volcker days and yeah. Alan Greenspan, yeah. and they say, "Well, no, the Fed's very powerful." And my gosh, I mean, the Fed is in our headlines yeah. virtually every day, Warren. Yeah, well, you know, I've been saying for a long time it's just a mistake. You know, they've mistaken yeah. correlation and causation. They're not controlling anything. And if you look back at uh, Volcker's times, it was what brought the inflation down. Well, oil before. His, yes, he raised rates, but the price of oil dropped from like 40 to 10. Now, today, if that ever happened, we got that big of a drop of oil. Let's say it dropped from um, you know, where it is now, 60 to 50. We'd have a massive deflationary event. Okay. So you heard it again from the, the horse's mouth. Uh, quickly, I just want to touch on this. Uh, oh, you know, if oil dropped <laughs> from 60 to whatever, it would be deflationary, massive deflationary event. Well, luckily for us, uh, we do have something to compare in recent history, and uh, we can just see if he's right, okay? Um, for those of you who may not know charts and so on, I can show you right now how much oil dropped, okay? The peak was about 149, 46, whatever it was, and it hit a low of $26. That's an 82% drop in oil prices. Did we have a massive deflationary event? No. No, we did not. Even today, oil is down 63%. Even today. Okay. So, again, we are seeing that the things that Mosler is saying just does not jive with economic reality. So now you're starting to understand why my service is called Real Macro, right? Because it is dependent on math, facts, and data, and not what somebody's ideology is or political agenda. All right. So in this video, we're going to examine the famous arg argument that uh, government deficits equal private sector savings, all right, which I don't disagree with. There is uh, money has to go somewhere. Money is always flowing. And, uh, you know, to say that government deficits don't end up in savings is wrong. We agree with MMT on that. Okay, we agree with Mosler on that. It is true that deficits do end up in uh, somebody's savings, but not the 95%. I've said this a million times over and over. So let's let's uh, let's hear something here. Deficit spending adds to our savings. I think I just said that. All right, let's pause right there. See this? See this word? Our, our, our. This is a this is a this is one of those trickery fuckery, uh, double talk kind of uh, words. Okay, this is fuckery right here. There is, as I showed you before, $244 trillion of debt in the world. The opposite of debt is, of course, savings. We are not stuffed with savings. We, meaning the 95%. We are not stuffed with savings. So, if there's anything that MMT that is truthful is that you have to think on the uh, by by looking at the other side of the ledger, okay? Got to look at the other side of the ledger, and the opposite of debt is savings. But unfortunately, it is not our savings; it is their savings, the top five percent. 
Now, the argument that you're going to get is, well, you know, there's high-powered money, there's vertical money, there's all these kind of different definitions of the word money, which in of itself, anybody that tries to redefine money, automatically they're bullshitting you. I'm telling you right now, it's automatic, right? Remember the, the libertarian Austrian crazies when they were telling you that government uh, uh, debt, uh, I'm sorry, government debt, that uh, real money was gold, remember that, right? The The... Fiat is worthless. <laughs> I'm like, okay, if it's worth it, send it to me. But none of them did. So the, again, get back to MMT. MMT tells you, no, no, the only money that matters is uh, is uh, government deficits. Government deficits. Government deficits. That's high-powered money. That's high-powered money. That's vertical money. That's, you know, right? But can you pull out a dollar from your pocket and tell me if it's a high-powered money or a horizontal money, which that's what they call... Uh, uh, that uh, private money creation from banks, and they call it horizontal money. Ooh, right. Uh, now, again, we're going to go with that word fuckery again, okay? That government deficits are high-powered money, and bank-created money is not high-powered money. Yet, here's the fuckery, government agents are the banks, the banks are the agents of the government. So what is the difference? Whether the, de the, the deficit or the debt comes from the government or its agents. There's no, there's no difference. <laughs> All money is money. It doesn't matter if it comes from the government or its agent, the banks, doesn't matter. All money is money. If you understand that, <laughs> you understand economics. And 244 trillion in the world is our savings, which is not our savings. <laughs> and that's why people are upset, right? That we don't have enough savings. I don't think there's a soul on the entire planet that doesn't know what inequality is and why, you know, it's such a big problem. And, um, you know, things are not going the way they're supposed to. Let's just put it that way. And if you go and Google it, you're going to find so many websites telling you about inequality, you know, the top 1% income growth and, you know, all this stuff. And this sucks and that sucks and everything sucks. Okay. So, um, $244 trillion into this and $66 trillion uh, into this, we have ended up with what? Inequality, right? You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this out. <laughs> so the MMT proposal is that we continue to do what we are doing, okay, to fix inequality. Well, <laughs> there's something wrong with that kind of logic, isn't it? But this is what they're masters at. They are masters at word fuckery, our savings. So let's hear it again. Deficit spending adds to our savings. I think. I again, there you go. <laughs> Fuck, I don't think it's adding to our savings, okay? I think it's adding to their savings, and it's not, you know, <laughs> oh, I shouldn't use the word think. It is, okay? It is. It's adding to the top 5% savings, not ours, theirs. Now, something that they, they impress the, um, uh, the everyday Joe Schmo, the unsuspecting, uh, you know, person on the street, the Joe Schmo, is the word to the penny. To the penny gives a, a, an indication that there's such a high degree of accuracy in what I am saying, okay? That's, that's the word fuckery. So let's, let's hear it uh, from the man himself. Reserves are cash, otherwise known as savings. And sure enough, last year, savings went up by exactly that amount to the penny when you include all the non-government sectors. To the penny, see that? It's all to the penny. Well, again... Let's go back to reality land. When there is four, uh, $244 trillion okay, of money in the world, of course it's going to be to the penny because the government debt hits a record $66 trillion, 80% of global GDP, Fitch says. Okay, Of course it's going to be. That's like putting a, a glass okay, at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean and saying, look, this glass is full to the brim, to the penny. It's so perfect how much water there is inside the glass. Yes. 
but outside the glass, it's, it's a fucking ocean, you know. So there's nothing, uh, you know, calculating me to the penny kind of. Uh, oh, look at this! Look how bright I am. I've calculated to the penny. Okay, Th- there's none of that. That's just garbage. That's just again word fuckery to impress people that don't know economics and they think like, oh my god, wow, this is wonderful. MMT really knows its shit. Wow. God, this guy Mosler is smart. Yeah, okay, sure. Here's a chart. Uh, Personal savings, which is the blue line, and red is the uh, deficits. And, you know, uh, this is the the deficits right here, the zero. This is a surplus here, okay? What you will see is since 1975 that the savings rate has gone down. Didn't matter what the, what the, if there was a surplus or a deficit, it doesn't matter, okay? Since 1975, savings rates have gone down. In recent history, okay, since 2005 hit the bottom, it has been rising, all right? That's the, rea- the reality. And the reason that it's been going down since uh, uh, 1975 is because credit cards and credit became readily available to everybody. So the... People's savings was replaced by the ava- available credit to them. So their their savings became debt, right? Credit. And then that bottomed out in 2005, and the trend has reversed, and savings is finally starting to rise. And as a result, we have gotten a, a nice, slow, steady rise in the economy. Which finally brings me back to this nice conversa- conversation we've been having. And this is typical of uh, Warren, where he'll uh, he'll um, text wall you. Well, he'll give you some big, long, you know, kind of response with a link, and uh, or a very short answer, and then run away. Okay, he's like a little timid butterfly. Uh, and usually, the the responses that he gives are cryptic, right? Nobody can really understand what he's saying. And the followers of uh, MMT who are blinded by word fuckery are automatically going to click like, okay, and I agree and retweet, and they don't know what the hell he said, or (laughs) what the meaning of what he said, just uh, the implications of it in the real world, they have no clue, but they just click. So, uh, my response was, America did not become the greatest nation on earth uh, following such economics. Uh, I won't call socialism, since it is a way... uh, uh, from uh, since it takes away from the argument, right? So uh, again, I'm I'm not I'm apolitical. I don't give a shit. We need a little bit of capitalism. We need a little bit of um, uh, socialism. And in the next uh, post, I say, well, I'm, I'm not against. <laughs> I don't disagree that the natural rate of interest is zero. It is. What I am uh, disagreeing with is that you know the government is going to set wages. The government is going to uh, give jobs, the government uh, will give health care, government will make make it all green, government will control production, government will control inflation, okay? The, the government does everything. To me, that sounds like the Soviet Union, and we all know how that worked out, right? It didn't work out very well. Uh, in fact, the joke is, uh, and I always tell this to my subscribers, um, in fact, one of my subscribers told me, who, were, who lived in the Soviet Union, says, uh, you pretend to pay us and we'll pretend to work. <laughs> That's the Soviet way. And then Warren's response is, uh, as currency monopolist, via co- coercion, taxation, it has necessarily been that way all along, whether anyone likes it or uh, knows it or likes it or not. Okay. <sighs> Here's the problem again with MMT. They start by putting money at the center of the economic universe. Okay? That money is value. And I've mentioned this before in a, in a video. No government can print value. Value can only come from the private sector. Okay? Production. That's where money comes from. So what happens is, by MMT framing something that 
the government must first deficit spend in order for money to exist okay therefore the government is the creator of value see that's the way the brain thinks and the reason it thinks like this is because when you pull out a dollar that you worked for and you produce something for profit and you get your share of income right and you go spend that dollar it's value to you so when you hear the word dollar you think value so you are thinking that since the government creates uh, money therefore it is value money and value are the same thing but it's not the same thing that is just that's crazy that's insane and that's why in the next post my response to him I'm reminding him it's the private sector that is the monopolist uh, uh, of production and wealth creation that makes it possible for the government to believe it can keystroke uh, or print value for a currency to pay for it okay it's not it's it's not the way it is it's the the center of the economic universe is the private sector production okay that production creates wealth that wealth allows the government to deficit spend okay if your nation has no wealth left and you printed so much money that nobody gives a shit about it nobody wants that bond that that is is an ownership of that wealthy nation or poor nation okay um, then nobody wants the bonds if it's poor they're like it's worthless my friend keep your bond I'm running away what happens to interest rates they spike and that's how you end up in the situation of Venezuela okay nobody wants their money they said man screw you give me dollars I don't want your currency take it back take the boulevard back keep your boulevard so what did they do they kept printing and printing and printing boulevards so naturally what's going to happen is a, a, a production collapse everything just collapses it's done it's finished because the amount of money that was created exceeded the productivity uh, of that nation the MMT argument is like, well, no, they borrowed in a foreign currency, Nick. They borrowed in a for foreign currency. See, that's the great MMT insight. Uh, see, again, they put the cart ahead of the horse. No. The only reason that anybody on the planet is going to borrow in a foreign currency is when they have first printed and given away all these dollars money whatever boulevards okay with no uh, result in product increase in productivity okay and then at some point nobody wants that currency anymore so they go out and they start using another currency right like the dollar then they end up with foreign debt which requires dollars in reserves they run out of those reserves they can't meet their obligations and the economy hyperinflates game over thank you for playing okay so make sure that you understand that that they first trash a currency then they get into foreign denominated debt and then they hyperinflate as a, as a result because production did not keep up with the printing of money and eventually nobody wanted that currency and then eventually they borrow in a foreign currency trying to pretend they have that you know production and then whatever production that e that economy had okay prior to to the hyperinflation okay uh, starts to collapse after the hyperinflation and it gets worse and worse and worse and it's game over thank you for playing and that is why MMT is is not a valid economic theory it's not because if you can go into Haiti or Bangladesh or any other uh, nation that is poor and you can just print up money start counting the bodies in the unemployment line and see if it improves uh, it's not gonna happen okay it's not gonna happen you can you, the government cannot create value for a currency only the private sector sector can do that through production and wealth creation which now makes me sound like a conservative libertarian teabagger you know live within your means you know all this nonsense okay just like the 
these guys, these libertarians, like to use the word job creator, the creator, okay? What Mosler is doing here is the opposite of them. It's saying the currency is the monopolist. Who's the, the government is the monopolist of the currency. The government is the monopolist of value, okay? <laughs> it is through taxation that creates value for a currency. The, the hot tax, as they like to uh, give an analogy, right? Uh, it's the same thing. It's uh, in reverse. It's just mind-boggling <laughs> that you sit there and you look at the two crazies and you're like, oh, yeah, it's a job creator. No, it's the monopolist, the government, the monopolist that creates value. No, it's the job creator. Both ideologies, both uh, political economic uh, theories are wrong. Okay, they're just wrong. They're just, just not the way it works. So then the next uh, post is, you know, again, drives me a little bit crazy. Uh, uh, he says, read the part about the uh, money story, which begins with the government desires to provision itself and so on. Yeah, so they've, they've made up this cute little story that uh, government will print money out of thin air to provision itself, then tax some of it back to keep value for the currency, and that we're all sitting, running around like idiots to provision the government, okay? And then whatever the government decides to leave some breadcrumbs behind, it's our savings, but we know it's not our savings. Uh, it's their savings, okay? And that's the little cute story that they like to put in a nutshell. So we can, again, easily debunk this. We can go back to the euro when it was created. Uh, according to MMT, okay, cute little story, everybody sat around, did absolutely nothing, okay, just waiting for the government to print euros so they can go out and provision the uh, uh, the government, and, uh, you know, if they didn't tax some of it back, their huts would be burned down, and, uh, and then, you know, whatever crumbs they leave behind, we're all lucky, and it's our savings, but it's not our savings, it's their savings, and if we just do more of it, we're gonna ha they're going to have more savings, and we'll all be saved. It's trickle-up economics. That's all it is. Trickle-down economics was bullshit, and now this is trickle-up economics equally as bullshit. These are all word fuckeries. That's all this is, okay? Um, the next post I... Uh, uh, I put here is the private sector, the monopolist of production, value, and wealth, has, is, and always will be at the center of the economic universe, because that's how it is, okay? Uh, it's an axiom. You cannot have an economy um, without people producing, okay? It's just not possible. If MMT was right, and the act of printing money and taxation and provisioning the government doing nothing created value, we can all just sit home, okay, play on our video games, on our couch, and everything would be fine, <clears throat> just print, you know, why the hell, I gotta go to work, <laughs> I'll just go punch in a clock, punch out a clock, uh, get that job guarantee, you know, give me that $35,000 a year, full health benefits, and uh, no skill required, no training, so fuck, I don't have to do shit, get some credit cards, and, uh, you know, life is good. You see, when you take the, the idea to its, to its natural conclusion, it doesn't make any sense, okay, that we all can just be on a job guarantee, that, uh, you know, we can take MMT and implement it in Haiti, you know, or Bangladesh and uh, some poor country and uh, create uh, economic wealth, you know. That is why the the... Um, MMT cannot ever work in any other nation on the planet. It goes after very rich, wealthy nations um, that have a lot of uh, wealth and money that they uh, they can implement, and they can run it for a while and just watch debt to GDP continue to rise, debt to assets and wealth continue to rise, print, 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 until finally you reach that point um, that uh, is going to take it into hyperinflation. In the case of the U.S., the U.S. has $155 trillion in wealth. Okay, that's, that's our wealth. What is our uh, public debt? 
Well, it's 22 trillion. All right. I five, man. Let's go. Let's start printing. Let's start printing until we get to that 55. And it's not going to be 55, right? At some point along the way, 255 trillion. And of course, the 55 is going to rise a little bit during that. Somewhere along the way, the people are going to start losing faith in that currency. Okay, as we hit uh, you know, 50, 70, 90, 110, 120, I don't know where exactly that point is, and nobody does, right? At some point, thereabouts, people are going to say, fuck the dollar, all right? And that's the way it works, because, you know, that's what happened in Soviet Union, right, USSR? You had a job guaranteed, it was a right for everybody to have a job, you pretend to pay us, we pretend to work. And what happened? They collapsed. So the MMT conclusion as to what can make America great is to do the opposite of what we have done up to this point, okay? Which is capitalism, uh, social safety nets, you know, just make it all so social safety nets. Government will control everything, okay? From wages to jobs to energy to banking to everything. Everything will be controlled by the government, and uh, that's it. We'll all be happy. We'll all be rich, and we're going to reach utopia. Well, that's not how we got here. I'm sorry to tell you, that's not how we got here. We are 5% of global uh, population, producing 25% of global GDP. Okay? 25% of global GDP, just 5% of the people. And now MMT is going to come in and tell you, no, no, you're doing it all wrong all these years. No, 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 no. It's not the way it works. Okay, ideological subversion is what it is. Ideological subversion, word fuckery, selling you some cute story um, that would just do the opposite. So finally, I leave you off with this little teaser, which I'll make in another video, how we ended up with negative interest rates. I want you to think about something that Amazon market cap alone, one company of the United States of America, one company, okay, is equal to the market cap of all of Germany. Okay? So Amazon, I'm sorry, did I say one company? <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> two companies. Okay, two companies, sorry. Two companies, Microsoft and Amazon, equal the entire stock market value of Germany. A very highly productive uh, economy. Think about that. Where did that money come from? I hope you own a shitload of Amazon and Microsoft stock. I really do, because that's, uh, according to MMT, our savings. Our savings. So by now, you should have figured out that what MMT really is, is not a progressive uh, movement. It's a neoliberal movement. Okay, It's, uh, it's economics for the top 5%. Not for you and me. That's the way they're going to sell it to you. They're going to sell it to you and you want to hear what you want to hear. But in the end of the day, okay, those deficits are their savings. Okay. So let's hear it one last time. Deficit spending adds to our savings. I think I just said that. Now we're going to walk through. Within economics, Austrians favor a method called a prioriism. A priori knowledge is logic or knowledge that exists in a person's mind prior to and independent of outer world experience. For example, the statement 2 plus 2 equals 4 is true whether or not a person goes out into his garden and verifies this by counting two pairs of tomatoes. What this means is that Austrians reject the attempt to learn economic laws through experiment or real world observation. The only true economic laws are those based on first principles, namely logic. As Hayek wrote, economic theories can, quote, never be verified or falsified by reference to facts. All that we can and must verify is the presence of our assumptions in the particular case, close quote. So the mainstream approach is inductive and the Austrian approach is deductive. The first draws generalizations from the data. 
The second applies preconceived generalizations to the data. A completely deductive approach is pre-scientific, however, which is why Austrians cannot legitimately claim to use a scientific method. Before this battle is over, the world will know that few stood against many.